Good morning from the Virginia Five. Having another fun day in the engine room. Sorry for the wind noise. It is very stormy here in Seattle today. But anyway, in the engine room today, we will be reinstalling the low pressure piston. Should be basically the reverse of getting it out of the engine. So that will be interesting. And then taking off the heads of the intermediate pressure piston and the high pressure piston to inspect them. They hopefully won't need to actually come out of the engine. So that should be fun. Uh, let's get started. Cleaning out all those those ring grooves in there. <laughs> The cleaning of the engine continues. The low pressure piston was at the top of its stroke and now it is getting cranked around to the bottom of its stroke so we can clean the rest of the piston rod. How you doing down there? We're cranking. Yeah. Slowly but surely. Yeah. So this here is the crank rod and then up here is the piston rod. So, gonna be cleaning that. And then you, what are you doing over here besides cleaning? Just cleaning. That's Just cleaning? Just uh, taking advantage of the position right now. Oh, yeah, this is the IP piston rod. Half of there. Okay. <laughs> So we've got the piston over the engine, and now comes the real challenge, is getting the piston rings fitted in place. Reinstalling the piston is a little more involved and complicated than pulling it out was. We do not have a ring compressor large enough for a 27 inch piston, so it's going to take some creativity and some finesse on the part of the crew to keep the piston rings in place over their grooves as the piston is lowered into the cylinder. So that's gonna take some time and just have to watch and uh, see as it goes in. Something 
come down. I don't think you go down, you gotta go up. piston in low enough to have the lower set of piston rings in place. We're going to put in the upper pair of piston rings, which is inner and outer, and keep lowering the piston into the cylinder. Side is a little above my outside over here. Okay. From here, your end is high also. Towards yeah, your end is high. Yeah. Oh, this is nice. nice. I'm a DEI oh, Whoa. Whoa. Now, this See the real good. Oh. Uh, if you want to tap, well, at some point, this it's, is going to be it. Ah. Right? Oh. It's, it's, I don't think anything we can do to it unless it is grabbing. So right now, I see they're sitting on the uh, we're at top dead center, right? Yeah, I think so. Oh, sorry. No, this is probably good. <laughs> <laughs> now this is tight. That was a good. Nobody's finger in there. That's a good noise. deal. No, I was like, I should have said, okay, watch. That's, <laughs> now that was nice. All right. Okay, so now what? Just tapping? One more tap. Yeah, I mean, we can take the thing, I, I get this all out of the way, I think. Yeah. It's lined up, the pit rings are all in the cylinders. Put the nut on it. Yeah. Yeah. So this goop going onto the threads of the piston rod is never seize. As the name implies, it prevents nuts from seizing onto the threads of bolts and other things. We use copious amounts of it on the ship because nobody wants to have to deal with seized nuts. Three and a quarter. Oh. So yeah, we should have a bar. All right, so we've gotten out the ship's largest socket and the ship's largest socket wrench, and then we're going to put a cheater bar on the end of the wrench for even more leverage as this nut gets torqued down. And. Once the nut's on, someone's going to go down on the jacking gear and roll the engine so that the piston will run up and down in the cylinder and just settle into place. Then we'll give the nut a final tightening and put the set screw back in. 
Then I probably meant two inches. Yeah, you're right. I want this. Okay. Home Depot was out of it. Okay. So, Jeff, next job wants to All right. So, the low pressure piston is back inside the engine where it belongs. So, they ran this, the piston up and down inside the cylinder a little bit to get it settled and then ran a new set screw in through the nut and it's good to go. I'll just have to cut a new a new gasket and put the head back on. You can see that the piston sits right at the lower edge of this uh, inlet from the valve. And this is so that there's enough space for steam to get on top of the piston to push it down. So this is top dead center for this piston. It was in pretty good shape, so that's good. Uh, but unfortunately, we don't have time to get to the other ones today because this took a little longer to get on than we expected. So we will get to that next time. Until then, there are some other things going on on the ship, so we'll take a look at them too. So the other big news is that our wood delivery arrived. So this is all wood that is reserved for the current project on the Virginia 5, as well as future projects. We're probably not going to use all of this. The Virginia 5 was originally built out of old growth Douglas fir, and we do our best to do any repairs and rebuilds with authentic materials. We get our wood from a local sawmill that does small scale logging and milling of this wood. So after the wood is milled roughly into size, then it does have to sit for several years and dry before it can be used on the ship. So all of this stuff has been in an off-site shed drying for the last several years and has just been delivered into the carpentry shop at the shipyard so that it can be used. This is a future hull plank, which is just being cleaned up a little bit with a rotary sander to get off any gunk that's gotten stuck on it during transit. The other project that needs to be done before hull planks can go on is to fare all of the frames that have been revealed and the ones that have been replaced. It's very important that the hull planks sit flush against all of the frames. So, but we can't just mill all of the frames to the exact same uh, size because the ship's hull is curved. So the batten here that is temporarily nailed on is so that the shipwright can test the curve of the ship's hull and then fare down the frames with a hand plane and sometimes a power plane to ensure that they are all perfectly smooth, perfectly even, and get the ideal curve. It is a bit of a tedious process, but very important because we do not want to discover any issues after the hull plank has gone up. The vertical curve of the frame up and down can also be tested by attaching a batten along its edge. Getting these curves right uh, just by eye is where the real skill comes in uh, with wooden ship building and why you want experienced shipwrights doing this work.
right, so here's the frames, all fared nice and smooth and even. Uh, one of the last tasks will be to plug up all of these little holes using wood nails. And wood nails are just pieces of wood that have been cut into a nail shape. They get dipped in boat sauce, pounded into the hole, uh, and then they will also get shaved smooth. So hopefully we'll be ready to put on hull planks, but we do have another visit from the Coast Guard uh, in the next day. So they'll be looking at the work that's been done and seeing if there's anything else that they want us to do. So this may be everything we're taking off. It might not be if the Coast Guard finds anything else wrong that they want addressed. We will see. I will leave you with wood nails being pounded in. It's kind of fun. As they go in, you can hear the sound that the hammer makes as the wood nails get tighter. It's kind of fun to listen to. Right, thank you for tuning in and be sure to subscribe to the channel to get notified when our next video goes up. We'll see what the Coast Guard has had to say about our haul out. Till next time.